I don't use the word genius that often. But I just thought I should say that. Here you go, Cam! Thank you. Thank you, John Paul. I'm really glad I took all of the racy stuff out of this <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to start by saying thank you, John Paul, for saying such nice things about me during your speech. Uh, yeah. I'm not an experienced public speaker, but uh, most, uh, look, I'm not an experienced public speaker, but I am picturing all of you in your underwear right now. Yes. It's a tip that I read in a book about public speaking. I've also been drinking for several hours. <laughs> I made that tip up myself. <laughs> Uh, first things first, John Paul and Alexis, congratulations. And thank you for the honor of standing with you as you receive the sacrament of marriage. Most sacraments don't end with your dad telling you to kiss a girl at church. But this one did, and that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, I can't imagine a more memorable way to start married life than here at this wonderful dairy farm with all of your family and friends. Okay, maybe I can. But that would take a really big jacuzzi. <laughs> Quick background. John Paul's been stuck with me for half his life. Growing up, I was a classmate, a teammate, and the guy he wasn't allowed to sit next to at Mass. <laughs> Since then, I've been a college roommate, a terrible wingman, and the guy he's still not allowed to sit next to at Mass. <laughs> a lot of people expect me to poke fun at the groom tonight, and with how long I've known him, you might think that I dredge up embarrassing stories from his past. If so, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. The truth is, I've never known him to be anything but a man of integrity, honor, and impeccable character. So rather than shooting him down on his wedding day, I'd like to celebrate some of his finer characteristics. First, he's incredibly well-rounded. In high school, he was captain of the football team, honor roll student, Eagle Scout, altar boy, and leading actress in Sexy Teen Moms too. <laughs> he even spent what little spare time he had volunteering at the local nursing home. Though, it was kind of cruel that he insisted on winning every game of Capture the Flag. <laughs> Of course, I'm exaggerating. He lost a few of those capture the flag games. And we lost even more of those old folks. It's also no secret that John Paul was pretty sheltered as a kid. For years, I was convinced his romantic history ended when they stopped making the Sears catalog. <laughs> Tell that joke too many times and you'll go blind. <laughs> John Paul has always been a man of stellar reputation. His success on the field made him a household name, a role model. The fact that he was blessed with an uncanny ability to brown nose and a tolerance for talking to other people's parents never before seen in the modern era? Well, that's beside the point. After hanging up the cleats, John Paul transferred to FSU where we quickly fell into a groove as roommates. He handled all the day-to-day -day stuff like cooking, cleaning, and paying the bills. While I need the important stuff, like pounding limeritas and waking up in our bathtub. 
John Paul has the innate ability to speak for hours on any subject. And days if he actually knows anything about it. But don't let his lectures on state fiscal policy or the intricacies of proper sweater maintenance fool you. John Paul's not boring, and living with him was an adventure. Uh, one day I came home to find that our living room furniture had been moved, and in its place stood John Paul, pitching a literal tent. He spent, he spent that weekend braving it in the great indoors, surviving on college football and Papa John's pizza. What I admire most about John Paul is that he is a generous lover. I mean, supporting a loyal friend. It's hard not to feel competitive towards your friends. But with JP, that's impossible. Partly because he's better than you at everything. But more importantly, if he's your friend, you have an ally who actively roots for your success. But, this weekend is about more than John Paul. This weekend is about John Paul and the love of his life. His camping gear. He really loves that stuff. It's also about our stunning bride, Alexis, who now owns half that camping gear. I first met Lexi three months into their courtship and have been a huge fan ever since. She checks all of the can boxes. She's nice to my friend, she loves drinking wine, and look, most importantly, she laughs at my jokes. As a couple, they share an enthusiasm for life that is contagious. And not contagious like that thing Justin had. I mean the good kind. has changed in just a few short years. It seems just yesterday we were living here in Tally with zero girlfriends between us. Then, John Paul moved to Philly and all of a sudden we had one girlfriend between us. Next thing you know, he moves back here, I moved to New York, and sure enough, we now have one wife and zero girlfriends. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope these personal insights have helped convince you of what a beautiful relationship John Paul and Alexis have in store for them. Law school taught me that marriage is not just some heartless, state-sanctioned institution. It's about two souls coming together to merge and protect their assets. <laughs> All joking aside, John Paul and Alexis make love look easy. They make it look fun. In a divisive world consumed by fear and uncertainty, it's inspiring to celebrate such a sure thing. JP, Lexi, the universe got this one right, and I, for one, I think it's about time to start quarterback. Got a break. <laughs> now, if you could, please join me in raising your glasses to the happy couple. <laughs> to the bride and groom, may your happiness be complete, your marriage long and prosperous, and may every wedding speech you hear be shorter and funnier than mine. <laughs>